Hello everybody, I thought I would continue with the tour today and we're going to start, well actually the whole tour today will be the three polytunnels and we'll go through all of them. We'll start in this little one here, I know we've only just recently planted that up but we'll have a quick look in there and then we'll do the other two tunnels and then later next week or into the week after we'll do the rest of the plot tour that we've missed out which is essentially all the back area. Um, and I'm filming this early just so in case this heat does get a bit savage today I thought I'd do it early rather than um, melt <laughs> so we'll crack on we'll have a look inside the tunnels so we were in here within the last week and I planted this bed up with tomatoes and beans and you can see that the beans are doing well as are the tomatoes they've flourished on some have now flowered and some have even got fruit it's kind of instant really Really, the reason I've come in here to show you is I've got two squash plants in here. This one, which is now recovering. They remember, they were very yellow on one at the other end. But also, I've got my garlic drying rack sited up up here. So all this should dry off in this next week or so. If I pull you down, you can see the other squash and all the foliage trailing down underneath. And I've got it supported from above and below. So there we go, just a quick one in this tunnel. So we'll go into the new tunnel, as I still call it, at the back of the plot. This was put up early last year and it's his second growing season in here. Now immediately down this side, you can see all these, all these tomato plants down here. I'll actually sit down so you can see clearer. There's a standard garden fork there. That's how tall they are. These plants, are all side shoots from the Crimson Crush in the final tunnel that you'll see in a few minutes. And these were all taken off the, the mother plants about eight weeks ago now. And these, all the plants in this tunnel were planted on either the first or the second of June. So this essentially is six weeks growth in this tunnel. And I'm using that new method of growing called fertigation in here, which is basically watering with the feed in and doing it daily. So you get the best of both worlds. You can see as I march along here, these are all looking really fit and healthy plants. There's a cucumber in there as well. And one at the end, which is going away. Again, these have all only been planted six weeks. On this other side of the tunnel, we've got some new varieties to me, tomatoes. Now this one, now is approaching chin height on me and this is a black strawberry again it's a new variety and Audrey from Real Food Comes Dirty kindly sent me the seeds over I was actually looking for a seed that I wanted to try this year I'd seen some pictures online read some stories about it called um, Barry's Crazy Cherry and I asked if she would send me some seed, if she could get hold of some, because they're in America. And she did, and she sent me the extras. So this is black strawberry. This one is blue chocolate. There's a little fruit on there at the minute. There's a little one on the black strawberry, but there's not much fruiting happening at the minute. And I've also got a mix of peppers in here. And you can see down here, I've got peppers coming now. And on these plants, there's quite a few coming and I've also got aubergines, aubergine plants, there is one or two fruits started but again they've only been in six weeks so i to give them a chance. More aubergines there, we'll come out of this little area. I'm skirting this table but um, we'll come back to that in a second. These are Brad's Atomic Grape. Tony um, did a germination test earlier on earlier in the year of seeds he'd saved from last year and then he very kindly sent me some seeds for these and I've grown these and again these are only six weeks old from planting and these are doing very well. Now here's the stunner of the bunch these are the Barry, Barry's Crazy Cherry and just look at the flowers on this just absolutely phenomenal and the amazing thing about these, if I can come round and I'll try and show you one truss. And try and isolate one truss just so you can see it. It's difficult on camera. But this is the truss here. 
All of this is one truss. So all of that from there, all the way around here and round here, that is all just one truss. <laughs> it's phenomenal. I'm not going to do a flower count. I'm not going to do that. But that's just stunning. And apparently these, um, this variety is very tasty. I've got some more peppers down here. And these two down here, although we don't eat a great deal of it, and Tony and JB call me for it, these are chilli plants. That one's looking rather sickly. This one's doing rather well, and we have got some fruit on them somewhere. I did see one or two the other day, little ones. But all in all, so this is all six weeks growth using the fertigation. Now, I have been asked about this. Um, somebody sent me an email a couple of weeks ago asking, would I show how I do the, this fertigation and the stuff that I'm using? So very quickly, I'm going to go over this because I know it's not everyone's cup of tea, so to speak, although it is these plants. <laughs> if this is your first time here, Green Side Up is dedicated to helping gardeners of all levels, ability and experience. So remember to subscribe and then I can help you too. And it's the big red button just down here and it's free. Doesn't come any better than that, does it? <laughs> so this involves three inorganic feeds for your plants. I've got two separate pots here. This first one is calcium nitrate. So the inorganic fertilizers, they're not natural so to speak and I've got little tiny weigh scales here just a little cheap one they're only five or six quid and I want six grams of this it's quite accurate there we go that's that one and you keep that separate from the rest so that's that one the next one is the master blend. This is the actual fertilizer itself. And I want six grams of this as well. Now it's very tiny amounts in comparison to the bag size. As I say, it is quite expensive. This whole kit here, this three bags 32 pounds and I'm on my second lot now so it's now costing 64 pounds to get this growth in here this last one is magnesium sulfate and I just want three grams of that I mean I did I did some crazy calculations with this a couple of weeks ago that if I went half a gram over on one it would last me two weeks less. So you've got to be precise, hence the precise weigh scales. So we've got those two weighed out. Now we need to mix them with water. And you add them to your watering can. The reason you keep these apart is because this one can affect the feed if you mix it directly. So keep those separate. And I'll show you the watering can and what else I'm going to do in a minute. So that's mixed. That goes in the watering can. So I'll fetch the watering can up. Now this is, a, basically it's a truncheon and it measures your feed in the water. Ideally you want you want the pH of the water to be right just slightly lower than neutral and this measures the parts of the salt that are in the water which gives you a good indication of the quality of the water the ability of the water to um, take the nutrients into the plant and also the salt in the water I think that's right so I'm still getting my head around it so now that I've mixed that up 
you can insert this truncheon and you can see the lights going on and that's around 1.4 1.6 and that's perfect for my peppers which is what I've weighed all this out for so now just simply water my peppers keep them on the dryish side but still water them and that's it that's all there is to it now the main issue with this this is the sort of traditional generic way of using um, what they're now calling master blend this is um, a feed mix which gives you everything you need for a plant's growth and you tailor it using this to get the right levels for your particular plants there's all kinds of lists online which will tell you the EC reading that you need for each plant the problem is, as I say, this mix costs £32. I'm now on my second mix, so that's £64. These scales are about £7.50, and this truncheon was about 70 quid. It's a lot of money. But I can use this moving forward with other things. That's why I've invested in it. Otherwise, I would have just stuck with the directions that were on the packet and that you can find online and done it that way. That's the only reason I've got that truncheon, is I can use that moving forward. And moving forward next year, I'll do this same test again on a selection of plants in here, but I'll also introduce what they call straight fertilizers. So it'd be straight potash, straight nitrogen, those sorts of things. Make up my own one of these mixes. It'll be a lot cheaper for similar results, I hope. That's what I'm going to do. And then moving forward, there'll be more tests in the years to come trying to find the balance trying to find the best fertilizer that works for me and then works for other plants as well and it's cost effective at the minute it's an outlay but hopefully long term it will pay me dividends whilst I'm paying out for it <laughs> so. so we come in now to the the engine room my big tunnel this is 28 foot by 18 foot wide it's a big tunnel yes and these are my crimson crush plants here in this bed all along here and what i did was earlier in the season i had a bit of a trial this is just about a no dig bed just about near as damn it and i did dig in this and put compost in and on this right hand side here where you're looking now i put the rocket grow compost in that's um i bought that online and on this side i used the biodigestate compost uh, that I got from a friend very close to me and you can see the difference the rocky grow is far superior although you can't rule out this other compost uh, because it is growing the plants they all look nice and healthy and green and what I've done at the ground level between each two plants I've put quite a deep pot it's about seven eight inches deep there so that I can water directly into the pots and the water goes directly to the roots of the plants. The same with the feed as well. I do keep the surface moist as you can see there, but I also mostly water into those pots and there's two more in there. In the next bed, I've got more tomatoes again, but I've done this the traditional way for me, how I've always done it, dug and hole, and put blood fish and bone in that's one way i've always done it. the other way is to put compost in or manure whatever i have to hand and then just grow the plants and we've got ildi down here again this is all one truss here all this is one truss they reckon 60 to 100 fruits per truss and they come out as little tiny sweets <laughs> and they are sweet they're not heavily sweet, which I don't like in tomatoes. I don't like the heavily sweet ones, but they have got a nice flavour to them. Really enjoy those. Great with a salad. Moving down, we've got some Black Prince here in the middle, which is a new variety to me. I haven't actually tasted them. There are a few ripe. I haven't actually picked them. And at this end, we have the Jersey Devils, and they are just starting to ripen, as you can see down there. So looking forward to these. We'll walk along the back of these tomatoes as well. So these are the Black Prince. We've got some of those ripe. We'll be picking those in the next day or two. Along the back of the Ildi. Again, great big trusses. 
going to get a lot of fruit off those cucumbers here at the end of the crimson crush and you can see here we've been picking these for about a week 10 days i would say now there you go there's a nice look at them coming along lovely so fairly pleased about them little microgreens trial here at the back again peas not looking a bit yeah but it's been difficult. It has been a bit of warm weather. I got caught out and these dried out yesterday. Thankfully, they've mostly recovered. I must remember to water them again today. And the water butt in the, in the tunnel so that the water is the same temperature as the plants that are water. Now, down this other side, I've got a mix, mixed bag of peppers down here. Mostly sweet peppers. There is one chili that's just behind the door here. And the rest are peppers and spare tomato plants. Not even really sure what tomato plants are put in here, but they're there. And I've got butternut squash at the back here. These were sown at the same time as the ones in the small tunnel. These were just planted a lot area earlier. And they're trained to go up and down. So this vine will go all the way down the side of the tunnel, past the other one all the way up to the end and this one will come down this way and do exactly the same because you get really really long vines on them once they've reached the end then I'll start pruning back the secondaries which are the vines that grow off these main vines so yeah there's more peppers here this these six actually you should note these in your mind for um, when I show them in the future, these six peppers are special. I'll say no more about them than that at this moment. We've got a few fruit forming on them and hopefully we'll get a decent harvest off them. But we'll come back to these a bit later in the season and I'll explain the story with them. These over here, these are sort of a lunchbox pepper. It's doing lovely. And I think that's the same type, although they're a different shape. No, I think that's Etiuda Orange. That's the other lunchbox over there. Up above them, still got some more young plants coming on and plants and seeds sown to keep things going. There's another gutter of peas there. There's more lettuce and endless stuff. And these, <laughs> these are the same squash that are over at the back over there. And I've got some melons down there. I'm going to do something different with them a bit later this week. So stay tuned for that. That should be quite interesting, I hope. And some scraps and bits and bobs of plants. And of course, the brassica bed that I featured the other day. I've got a couple of types of kale in there. When the onions come out outside, those kale will go in. Um, and then we'll figure out what to do with the rest of the plants in there. But that's essentially it. That's the tunnels tour, so to speak. Oh, one more thing is the grapes. I have been thinning these out, as you can probably see, and this is the idea to have bunches that really are not touching. It's a heck of a job. I need to get my stepladders down to see what I'm doing, like for this little area here where it's tight. But otherwise, whenever I've got five minutes, I'll come in and just have a thin. just because you don't want them too close together because you'll encourage rot, mould and rubbish. So just do that. I've already thrown two trugs away of grapes, undersized ones and ones that aren't needed. There's another one that was just filling yesterday before I went home. <laughs> so a tremendous amount have come off and we'll still have a tremendous amount on that framework because it's also at the back as well. There's a second row at the back. So we're going to have a lot of grapes providing they all ripen okay and we don't get any mould setting in. So that's the tunnel tours completed. Oh, <laughs> as he says again, <laughs> it's like a PS, isn't it? Um, I've got a whole bed of sunflowers out the back of the plot there, which you'll see on a tour 
towards the end of the next week or the week after, whatever. Um, but somebody gave me these sunflowers here and I think they were about six, eight inches tall in little tiny pots. Let's come around this side. Little tiny pots and I just put them here on the soil. And the next thing I knew they were 12 inches, then 18 and 24. And what's happened now, I think, is that these plants have now rooted into the soil underneath. So I've been ripping the roots out if I try to plant them out now. So they could stay there. <laughs> they will have happy sunflowers in the, in the polytunnel, providing they don't hit the roof. But we'll see. <laughs> now I've got a new video coming out this week, which in it I will be covering a new growing method for me. And I'm excited about that because of the plants that I've chosen to test it with. And I'm looking forward to seeing how that develops over the season. I think it'll be quite, for a gardener, exciting. And so I'm looking forward to, to doing that. So that, that should be fun. But that's it for today. Look after yourselves, everyone. Please stay safe. I'll see you all very, very soon. Tarano.